This is Brand USA Talks Travel, elevating the conversation about international travel to the United States. Here's your host, Mark Lapidus. Can you fit an entire week's worth of clothing into a carry on? Yes, I actually recently have accomplished this small feat, which took me many years to do. <laughs> You're a true travel pro. I can't quite do that yet. I'm up to about four days of clothing, and after that, I run out. My guest today is Stephen Paganelli. Did I pronounce your last name right? After all these years of knowing you, I should know better. <laughs> it was absolutely perfect, actually. Fantastic. <laughs> You've been paying attention. Steve is Director of Destinations, Hotels, and OTAs Americas at TripAdvisor. Welcome to Brand USA Talks Travel, Steve. So excited to talk travel and TripAdvisor with you. Well, thank you, Mark. It's always great to talk with you. We don't get to do it nearly often enough, though. Many people in the travel industry do know you personally, Steve, but for those who don't, it would be great if you could explain your role at TripAdvisor. Yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, my role is to help our various partners, again, across destinations, hotels, and online travel agencies, connect with our massive scale of travelers. You know, high intent audience that's looking to get out of their comfort zone, travel to new places, get off the beaten path. And we do that in a whole lot of different ways today than frankly we did even when I started 10 years ago. I want to hear a few things about TripAdvisor's rich history and current status, but first let's answer the question that most people want to know. What recent trends are you seeing concerning international travel on TripAdvisor? Well, it's fascinating. It is definitely storming back. 2022 got us within a few points of 2019 in terms of international travel. Recent news with the opening of China only continues that trend into 2023. As markets opened, we saw very similar behaviors in each subsequent market that opened, which is that travelers first traveled a little bit further afield than they were able to previously. They went to visit family and friends that maybe they hadn't been able to see. And then they started to push out that radius of travel and go further and further. And so last year was a big year for international travel for those markets that were open. And when it became easier for American travelers to not have to test before coming back, that outbound rate of international travel really increased from the U.S. At the same time, though, those ease of of restrictions enabled international travelers to come back to the U.S. as well, a market they had greatly missed. Are you seeing any chatter about COVID in your reviews at all, or is that completely dissipated? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We do still see it. This idea of sort of health and safety continues to be something that exists in the minds of travelers. Is it as forefront as it was 18 months ago? Actually, frankly, even 12 months ago when we were in the throes of Omicron, definitely not, but we still see it coming up as a concern among travelers. And one of the things that really saw an increase in during COVID was travelers telling us that they plan to research, travel more. And in fact, we've continued to see that be the case with travelers. They're doing a lot more homework. And frankly, they were doing a lot of homework pre-COVID, but that actually, that rate of homework has sort of increased. Have you seen the time on site for TripAdvisor.com go up? Uh, You know, I haven't looked at that stat specifically. Last time I was looking, we were seeing really healthy time on site. But as has always been the case, travelers have moved back and forth between sites. Mm -hmm. And TripAdvisor has been one of the ones that they sort of come back to again and again throughout that travel planning process. They come back at the very beginning when they're sort of trying to get that holistic view. And then they return again and again as they move sort of further down the funnel as they validate, okay, I want to go to one of these two destinations. And then I want to go to one of these five hotels. And each stage they check off one of those and make one of those decisions and then they come back. I don't know if you've ever seen this or not, but I've read in a few places that consumers will view up to 30 websites before they actually make a decision about a trip. Have you seen that too? Yeah. The number I think I saw most recently was 44. Wow. (laughs) So it's staggering. It's staggering. Okay. Let's jump now into a bit of TripAdvisor background. Is it true that TripAdvisor.com started as a demo site? You know, I've not heard that in our various origin (laughs) stories, and all good sites have a great origin story. Um, The story that I've heard most has been that it was started by our founder out of a frustration and finding actual sort of traveler feedback on the experiences they were having. Um, But, you know, the truth is probably always a little bit less exciting. And I think the reality is, however we started, we've evolved so much over the years, we continue to evolve. That's the beauty of the internet, right, is we get to see sort of in real time how consumers' behaviors are changing and react to that. And at TripAdvisor, I think we've long had a priority on making sure that we fail fast. We're constantly operating in a test and learn and iterate sort of um, environment. Any idea how many consumer reviews TripAdvisor's gathered since it went live on the web about 23 years ago? 
Yeah, actually, so last year, we surpassed the milestone of a billion reviews, one billion reviews that Travel can share with each other. Amazing, It's really incredible. And the rate of review sharing has been interesting to watch. You know, when I first started, it was, you know, I think it was 40 or 50 reviews a minute that we were getting. Today, it's it's probably in the couple of hundred that we're getting a minute from travelers. And I think that speaks both to the platform itself. You you mean a couple hundred thousand. (laughs) Yes, exactly, exactly, (laughs) exactly, yes, yes, yes. Thanks for the correction. You know, I think it speaks to also the trust that consumers are placing in one another on TripAdvisor. That's a big deal for us. In general, in our lives these days, there's not a lot of places that we place our trust. And the fact that travelers continue, and consumers in general, continue to rate TripAdvisor as one of the platforms they trust most above social platforms, news outlets, you know, all of the sort of usual suspects speaks not just to TripAdvisor, but to the user base as well that's going out of its way to share their experiences. And let's face it, loyalty to brands is not what it used to be. Yeah. So that's an amazing thing that you're saying. Yeah, for sure. TripAdvisor has how many users per month? You know, it varies seasonally, as you might expect. So, you know, hundreds of millions at certain times of the year. And what is great is throughout the pandemic, we continue to see really strong visitation, even when people couldn't travel. We maintained our status as the largest travel guidance platform. And our big focus, I think, recently has been on turning our users into members and creating a better membership experience. And not membership necessarily in the way that we think of membership, but when someone is logged on and searching for a destination or experience on TripAdvisor, that logged in process allows us to do a better job of harnessing all of the data that we have to serve up the right results for them. Uh, Skift had an article on this recently about our efforts in personalization, and they are widespread as we look to enhance our ability to do that again through what many recognize as one of the best sources of sort of traveler data in general. And speaking of that data, you've learned so much about user behavior. Can you share a few of the big discoveries from over the years and anything that has changed post-pandemic? Yeah, I think what's interesting, I I mentioned one earlier that they're doing more research. That is both in terms of sites that they're looking at, but the time they're spending. But what we also did, you know, I mentioned that milestone of a billion reviews last year. And one of the things that we were keen to understand is why do travelers keep coming back to a platform like TripAdvisor? And one of the things that travelers told us is it's about the quality of the reviews. And the way they define quality is the length of our reviews, believe it or not. The number of characters that are used allows a traveler to get more information about the places that they're considering visiting. And Tourism Economics has studied this as well. There's a TripAdvisor effect on travel that has actually caused consumers to travel more often, to go further, because of the confidence that the feedback of other travelers gives them. I was talking to a hotelier, this was actually probably two years ago, who made the statement to me that he gets reviews from a whole lot of different places these days, but the only reviews that he cares about are the ones that are on TripAdvisor. And I have to be honest, I did not believe him. I thought, oh, he's talking to a guy from TripAdvisor. He's just trying to be nice. And so, of course, I had to kind of kick the tires on that a little bit and probe. I'm like, how can that be if you're getting reviews from all these different places? And he said the same thing that consumers tell us, that the reviews on TripAdvisor give him the context that he needs to be able to improve the service that his own team is delivering. And in fact, that's what consumers are telling us, that because of those lengthier reviews that you see on TripAdvisor, whereas a lot of other platforms might get a star rating or you might get an it was good, it was great. They don't have the same requirements around the length of reviews. And so that is something that makes a big difference for travelers. I would never have guessed that because usually with content, shorter is better. Exactly. Same exact thing for me. Like, you know, I had to read it like twice to actually believe it to be true. How do you prevent fake reviews? Yeah, it's a great question. It's obviously one that I get pretty much every day. You know, TripAdvisor has always placed a huge priority on that because as soon as our site users, our visitors, our travelers stop believing in the information that they're finding on TripAdvisor, they stop coming. And so we've always placed a high emphasis on it. And that starts with our content moderation team, the team of professionals that come from really all walks of life, but very heavily from sort of credit card fraud prevention, former law enforcement. And between both human management as well as using technology to manage reviews, we do a great job at sort of identifying those that are fake and eliminating them from the site. I want to make it really clear. There is no one who is perfect at eliminating fake reviews and probably never will be. Last year, we identified a million fake reviews. 67% of those million fake reviews never saw the light of day. Our various systems eliminated them before they ever made it onto the site. The other 33% were 
were removed throughout the year. And again, due to those content moderation efforts. One of the terms that, I don't know if we coined it, but we certainly believe it, is that everybody has a right to write. They have a right to share their experiences and businesses have a right to respond. And that's where we've tried to limit the conversation. The traveler shares their experience, the business responds, and the conversation sort of concludes there. And then we leave it to consumers to make their own judgment calls from there. Here's probably the most important question I'll ask you today. How can destinations best work with TripAdvisor? It's a kind of a favorite question because it's not a one-size-fits-all answer, just as our work with destinations isn't one-size-fits-all. We work with probably a thousand destinations across the globe, from Abu Dhabi to the state of Utah to very small destinations that people may have never heard of. And many of those relationships are very different. In the case of Utah, last year actually already, we worked with them on creating animated videos to educate their visitors about sustainability efforts and how to be a responsible traveler. In Michigan, we worked with with their local industry to create video content that sort of extends that pure Michigan brand, but from the viewpoint of um, their stakeholders that are servicing travelers and visitors every day. Hello, Dave Lorenz. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. Another radio personality like yourself here uh, today. Yeah. So a wide range of ways that we're starting by understanding what the priority is because they do differ by destination and then working to craft solutions that work for them. One of the things I'm, I'm most proud of over the last year is our launch of our first episodic TV series called The Wanderer. We've had two episodes of that. They are the top organic search result for travel on Amazon Prime. And those, again, grew out of what one of those destinations, the first one indicated as a priority for them in terms of educating travelers, but more importantly, in their case, correcting misperceptions. Um, we worked with Orlando on the first Alexa voice skills for travel. And that program has gone on to be expanded internationally, pre presented on Amazon Prime. It's a host of different ways that we're working with destinations to sort of meet those objectives. I have a feeling that most destinations know that TripAdvisor content is available for their websites. But if anyone listening would like to see that widget in action, they can look at any of the city pages we have on visittheusa.com. Steve, is there anything you'd like to point out specifically about that? I think one of the great things is that it's accessible to everybody and we have free APIs. So really virtually anyone listening can access our content and incorporate it onto their own platform. We also obviously have paid solutions that allow you to do a little bit more customization as you've done on the Brand USA side. But the benefit of that is it strengthens the relationship that that platform has with their consumer. It allows them to leverage the trust and brand equity that TripAdvisor has. And we know through research that it adds to site stickiness because one way or another, consumers are going to look for that review content from TripAdvisor and elsewhere. So what's on the roadmap for TripAdvisor's future? Is there anything you can tell us? Yeah, you know, I teed it up a little bit earlier, actually. It is around leveraging that unmatched data set that we have around travelers to personalize the user experience even better than we do today and to keep honing our capabilities around that for both the benefit of our travelers, but also our partners across the industry, the destinations and hotels we work with. We are today the world's sort of preferred travel guidance company, but unless we're evolving with the consumer, we won't remain that. And so we're keenly focused on that. We also have our very popular Traveler's Choice Awards that we announced earlier this month. We announced our Traveler's Choice destinations. In February, uh, we'll announce our Traveler's Choice beaches. So for those like me who are sitting in the colder northern climes, we'll be able to warm up their thoughts with some of their travels coming up as we get into the spring season and when they're looking to escape that cold. So overall, I think I'd sum up our future as you know, really being focused on strengthening that community that we have and that we enjoy, strengthening the value and importance that reviews play, and then adding, you know, for the first, I'd say 20, 21 years of our existence, we've been a site that's been powered by user-generated content. And in the last 18 months, we've really focused on building out an editorial voice of our own. And so consumers and your listeners can look to see more and more of that as we move forward throughout 2023. Steve, thanks so much for taking the time out of your hectic schedule for us today. Hope to see you on the road at a conference very soon. I look forward to that. It has been too long, Mark. And uh, thank you again for the opportunity. It's really fun joining you. Finally, a reminder to our listeners that we're always seeking destination video storytelling for Go USA TV. The network continues to expand to smart TVs around the world. We're now on Samsung TV+, LG Channels, Rakuten, and many other platforms. So if you'd like to submit video, please get in touch with your Brand USA rep. That's it for Brand USA Talks Travel. I'm Mark Lapidus. Thanks for listening. 
Your feedback is welcome. Email us at podcast at thebrandusa.com or call 202-793-6256. Brand USA Talks Travel is produced by Asher Mirovich, who also composes music and sound. Engineering by Brian Watkins. Please share this podcast with your friends in the travel industry. You may also enjoy many of our archived episodes, which you can find on your favorite podcast platform. Safe travels.